Welcome to this first of three sessions in a series of what's new in ArcGIS for AutoCAD Release 350. ArcGIS for AutoCAD is Esri's free plugin to AutoCAD that integrates AutoCAD with the ArcGIS system. I use it to create and edit ArcGIS data using AutoCAD and to utilize the various ArcGIS web services, including maps, imagery, and feature services. I use it to read and create AutoCAD files with ArcGIS datasets embedded within them and to access and use maps from ArcGIS Online. In this series, I will explore the new user interface tools for domain constraints and date fields. I'll demonstrate the usability improvements to handle subtypes, and I'll give you an overview of the new ArcGIS for AutoCAD Autolisp API and show some examples of how I use it. Let's get started. In the first session of this series, I'll focus on domain constraints. I'll work with feature services whose attributes have domain constraints. I will show how the attribute dialog has been enhanced to deal with these constraints. I will also demonstrate domains in the ArcGIS for AutoCAD Table Viewer interface. Then wrap up the session by creating local feature classes with domain constraints from a feature service. The author of the GIS dataset defines the schema of the data contained in a feature service. Feature services are defined upon databases where the GIS administrator may have defined attribute domain constraints to help ensure better data quality. When I connect to a feature service, I'm using the feature service attribute domains that already exist on those features. In past versions of ArcGIS for AutoCAD, those domain constraints were ignored. In this release, ArcGIS for AutoCAD honors those domain constraints and will limit the ability to enter values outside the defined constraints and provide me with helpful pick lists to speed data entry and reduce typing errors. The allowable lists of values can be defined for each field and there can be different sets of constraints for each subtype. So the allowable list of values for a field in one subtype can be different for the same field in another subtype. After adding a feature service to my drawing that I know has both range and coded value domains, I can see how the attribute dialog has been enhanced in this latest version to help me edit these fields according to their domain constraints. Range domains constrain the limit of numeric values to a minimum and maximum value. When I fail to enter the appropriate values in a range domain here in the attribute dialog, the edit box will not allow me to type something invalid, so attempting to type a 33 or a 22 in a field that only allows values negative 10 to positive 10 is not allowed. Pick lists improve my experience when dealing with coded value domains. Selecting the appropriate subtype in the attribute dialog ensures that I will be applying the appropriate domain values for a given subtype. I get a similar experience but slightly different when working with range domains in the table viewer. If I enter an invalid value, I will get a warning symbol for that record. Hovering over the warning symbol directs me back to the reason for the warning. In this case, my entry is out of the range for this field. Selecting one of the subtypes of a feature service in the table viewer filters the contents of the view to only those features of that subtype. It also applies the domain constraints defined for that specific subtype. If the all types option is selected, then the domains for the default feature class will be used. If there are no domains defined for the default parent feature, I will not see the pull-down pickers at all for those fields, but may see the pick list for subtype features because they have been defined with domain constraints. It is therefore good to be mindful of the subtype filter when editing attributes with domains to get the most out of the editing experience. The only way to establish domain constraints on local feature classes is to extract the schema or data from a feature service. After extracting the feature service, I see that domain definitions are retained as I view them in the attribute dialog or in the table viewer. The key to getting domain constraints on local feature classes is to extract them from a feature service. In review, I can use domain constraints on attribute fields from feature services. 
The Attributes dialog will help me to answer correct values by limiting my input to valid numeric values for range domains and provide me with a convenient pick list for coded attribute domains and a date picker for date fields. I get a similar experience in the table viewer. To establish local feature classes with domain constraints on fields or subtypes, I must extract those feature classes from Web Feature Services. Be sure to explore this site for the other sessions in this series, as well as other training series and demos.